hello. Happy Sunday. Happy Beltane. <laughs> if you celebrate that and if you don't know what that is, then don't worry, it's all good. Um, so Beltane is May 1st traditionally and uh, it's a very, very happy festival. So I'm not going to go into the whole thing about it, but what I am going to focus on tonight is a bit about how we can use that energy for us, no matter what your belief system is. It's a, it's a really happy time about fertility and sexuality, and God knows we all need a little bit of all the all those feelings. <laughs> so let's celebrate. Um, so I don't know how you guys are feeling this week, or I do know how some of you are feeling. Um, I've had a lot of emotionally trying events happen in my life, and. Um, I've been like really holding space for them, meaning that um, trying to stay in the moment and not project fear and trying to be rational um, in the face of fear. And uh, what else have I been doing? Um, trying to keep it to my, like just a few people knowing about stuff because I don't want everybody else's fear to get in the way of stuff. So that's been very interesting and maybe new. Um, so I'm gonna do, a couple of things about this because what I've also noticed as usual is when I'm treating um, we get these themes that happen uh, with my clients and one of them is that I've noticed that particularly people up until their almost late 30s believe it or not still look for permission from their parents anybody attest to this <laughs> yeah still like not just need approval, but they're looking for permission for certain things, including like not telling somebody something or, or um, just doing something like generally hold back from what they feel like they need to do. Maybe their intuitive sensations, um, they're holding back. So um, this week I found myself a lot, whether or not it's mine to give or not, I'm, I'm saying that God is telling me to let you know this. Um, I give you permission <laughs> to be your own person to be individual to not spill the beans every time something happens to you to wait until you feel like it's time or it's necessary or what have you um, because telling somebody else something about your life shouldn't maybe not the word but doesn't need to feel um, like you're more anticipating the fear of their reaction. Does that make sense? So it's like, if you think that you're going to tell anybody, but particularly a family member or something, and you're more worried about their reaction than possibly the results of something happening, then that should be a telltale sign <laughs> that it might not be necessary for you to discuss this yet, or maybe not at all, because sometimes some things can really remain private. Um, so I'm letting you know this because I do remember a time in my life where something big happened and I immediately felt the pressure to just tell everybody that I was close with. Um, and I had a close friend say to me, like, you don't need to do that. <laughs> you don't have to tell them that, um, it's your business and that's up to you. So the reason I'm saying this is because again, there's been a theme this week of, even a just full grown adults needing permission to be like, you know what, this is private to me and I don't need to tell everybody this. Remember when you're like very young as a child and definitely into teens, you kind of tell like your best friend or whatever, every little thing that's happened, every little thing that's happened. And it's lovely. I mean, everything you're like, I, <laughs> you know, I, I wrote a note during class and then this happened. This happened. It's like a chronological order of everything, but there's also stuff that happens. That's very, very important. And as adults, we generally know when we need to share it with somebody and when we don't. And if it doesn't involve them and it involves more your emotions about stuff or your um, how you're going to deal with it, will it really affect you if you, really affect them, I should say, if you wait even another week? Because sometimes that timing can be really important. Anybody understand what I'm saying here? I hope so. Um, I really experienced it recently, so I'm sure my mom was actually is grateful that I gave her an extra week of not being concerned. By the way, everything's fine. <laughs> um, so with that being said, this goes into giving ourselves permission to deal with everything in bits and pieces, meaning, hey guys, I'm sorry, I'm not saying hi. I see Jackie, 
Jackie says, I got you, I got you boo. Thank you. Jackie, Christine, Vin, thank you for coming on. Um, so things have been heavy. I've been feeling a lot of heaviness. Everything's very intense. I was just describing how I feel kind of burnt out in my sessions, not meaning that I don't love treating, just I can feel the weight of my stuff, everybody else's stuff, um, and it's starting to wear on me. Um, so on the way home, I spoke to one of my friends and I said, you know, I have to give myself permission to go have fun, which is crazy that I have to do that, but I really do. And I, and Renee this morning was like, oh, we should take a walk. And I was like, no, I have too much to do. So I knew I wasn't giving myself permission. Um, but then by the end of the day, I was like, that was really dumb. I should have done that. So, <laughs> so yeah, but I knew that tomorrow we probably could. Um, so giving yourself permission to do what you feel like is necessary is really, really important. So if there's something maybe that you feel like you need permission to do, even if it's something small, I want you to write it down tonight. So I haven't always told you guys to have pen and paper ready, but you should because even if it's something small that I say that catches your ear, just write it down. So my question to you is where in your life right now are you holding back? It's not just the resistance that we discuss, but are you holding back? Like always putting off, oh, I'll do that when this happens. Um, oh, e even medical stuff. Oh, I'll do that after this happens. Oh, I'll go to that doctor after that. Like everything has to be lined up, right? We do this all the time because there's so much to do. So I just want you to take a few moments as I'm talking to jot down where are you holding back? And that inc include pleasurable things as well, whether or not it's a trip, whether or not it's um, something in business or friendship or romance, just figuring out where are you holding back? I'll take a breath for you. So I bet you got a couple and if you can jot them down on Facebook, that'd be great too. So I was speaking to my one of my close friends on the way home and as I'm venting to her, she's venting back with me and she was also saying, um, what's making her, her unhappy? You know, how she can't just be happy because she can't be with the person and, and all this other stuff. So I paused for a second because some of it didn't sound like it really made sense. And I said, did you hear yourself say this? And I repeated it back to her in like full reflection mode. Like I heard you say this, um, is that accurate? Yes. Okay, I heard you say this. Is that accurate? Yes. And I said, so you had two kind of opposing thoughts within the same breath, really. So do you know what you want? And as we were discussing it, like she kept kind of going a little bit back and forth and retracting what she was saying. So I had to pause her again and just say, listen, I know that you want to be with this person and that you feel like will really fulfill you with your happiness. And I also know you want to do this, but they're not merely making sense. So when we have very um, inconsistent wants, we think we know what we want, what's going to gain our happiness. Like I'm going to achieve this happiness, right? If you write it out, <laughs> you can probably see where you're holding back because it doesn't make sense. That's what I kept hearing from her. Like that's never going to work. That can't happen. Um, it's, it, it doesn't make sense. That won't work at this time in my life. There's a lot of, she literally kept putting the stops on her manifestations, on her wants, on her needs. And she just kept saying they don't make sense. They won't work out. It can't happen. And she's a very bright person. <laughs> so if she's doing that. I know some of you are doing that too. So I'm going to ask again, where in your life are you saying this can't happen? That doesn't make sense. Um, it's never going to work out that way. This is the way things are. And I'm not saying that it's not accurate. Sometimes there really are things that are in our way, right? But other times we've just decided already that our happiness is unattainable and <laughs> it's out of reach and it's never going to happen a certain way. And then I had to remind her that what she has now, the way things are now, four years ago were completely out of her reach. Um, she didn't have the relationship she wanted. She was with somebody else that they were not a good match. So when we paused for that, she's like, yeah, you know, I know that I've been thinking about that. I'm like, right. But do you remember that you thought it was completely not within reach? Like it would never happen. Oh yeah. Okay. 
but the difference between now and then is, and then she filled in the blank, is that I kept trying. It meant so much to me that I kept trying. Aha! <laughs> so, if something you want is there, right, and you have told yourself, I have this belief, this belief system, it's never going to work out. I can't get it. It's not within reach. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Are you going to get it? Are you going to get there? No, most likely not. Literally, unless God himself comes and goes, <laughs> let me push you there. And then it might be a little bit more painful than it needs to be. Maybe we'll get there, but it might take a longer amount of time. It might be more um, stress. It might be more money, whatever it is. So your, your peace, your calm, your, your happy place, does it come from within you? Of course. But... If we know situations that are making us unhappy or that are not bringing joy, do we just remain? No, we Marie Kondo that crap, right? And we go, no, 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 that's not working. What do I want? And then we have to stop ourselves again and say, where is the self-limiting belief coming from? So many times it's not coming from you first. Generally, we have the other people saying to us, I mean, even complete strangers, they have no, <laughs> no, um, they just don't hold back at all. They'll say, no, that's a bad idea. Oh, that you can't, that's not going to work. It's unreal. So if that happens to you, we have the choice, right? I mean, you can learn this in any, you can learn this in multi-level marketing. You can learn this from Tony Robbins, whomever. I'll say it again for you. All those no's. What do they do? They drive the yes, right? It shows you how much you want something or how much you want to change something. But then you have to do the work. Yes, spirit is here to help you, but you have to ask for help. Um, God is willing to conquer and divide with you, but you have to let them. <laughs> so those self-limiting beliefs that we remember how we t a few weeks ago we talked about um the negative core beliefs of like i'm not worthy i'm not this i'm not that and even though you don't feel that all the time it's in your self subconscious um but they come out in this area here where we go that can't happen but it can happen because as you focus on it and as you bring that that life to it oh i'm echoing hello um you're energizing something and it becomes already in the works because what you're forgetting is that your path has been shown to you millions of times over so many times. And while you think you're searching for your path, you're not listening. So stop and listen. It's not only that you're worthy. It's not only that your path is unbelievably, unbelievably beautiful. It's that you've decided it's never going to happen for you. So stop it. <laughs> That's enough. And now with that being said, it is a beautiful time of year. Things are blossoming. Life continues no matter what. No matter what crazy crap is happening, you're still going to see what we call weeds, which by the way are edible if you don't have Roundup on them. Um, <laughs> right? It's kind of amazing. You can eat dandelions, but we kill them. So there you go. Um, is that not symbolic? I don't know what to say. <laughs> They, they're pushing out through the ground to the concrete and here we are getting rid of them but we could have used them for life so think about that a bit we're constantly nipping and and taking things off uh, off of the land and making everything preened and pruned um, and forgetting that the earth even in its weeded glory is amazing so not just get outside but this is the time to be in awe of everything that is around you because it is very easy. I am a testament to this because I am the workaholic in the sense that I put a ton of pressure on myself to get all these things done. I'm an independent contractor, so is my husband. So we have these lists and they have to get done. And yesterday when we made our morning list, which thank God is very helpful, I put on the list, take kids to the playground, go outside and exercise and made sure that we got to that on the list. And when he said, we we're like, we don't have time, it's gonna put us so behind. I said, they're kids, we need to do this. <laughs> Which also was a reset button for us. So don't forget, it's time to play, it's time to be observant, and it's time to ask 
for this amazing divinity that you're going to feel inside and all around you. Um, so my coach was making me laugh because she's like, so did you do this? I said, of course I did it. You told me to do it. So I did it. <laughs> and then she's like, and how was it? I'm like, well, I had to come into this first. And then, and she stopped me. She's like, you know that you don't have to make it a formal thing. I said, you are correct. <laughs> I forgot that, that I don't have to make everything formal or a ritual or whatever. I just have to do it. So if I'm going to be talking to my ancestors on a daily basis, do they all have to be at an altar and pretty and quiet? No, <laughs> no, not at all. I can be in the car and I can talk to them and I can ask for help and thank them for their guidance. So there you go. It doesn't have to be perfect or beautiful because maybe that is why it's perfect and why it works because I'm just doing it. And I didn't see what you saw, um, what you said over here. I lost the chat, it went away. Okay, it's gone now. I can't read it. <sighs> okay, later. Renee said, I need to take time to check on my own health. Okay, yes, yeah, still haven't taken time to see any doctors since the pandemic. Renee is not the only person that has had this happen. Um, I myself, we, you know, held off and everything like that. And now it's like this list. I'm like, oh, what am I, 80? <laughs> list of things to do in doctors but here's the deal and I don't like being called alternative medicine I like saying complementary medicine I'm definitely not alternative we go together um, I just sometimes think that Western medicine doesn't realize that we're friends but we are <laughs> so we don't ignore those things so that's also gonna be my PSA for the night do not ignore anything in your body or that it's time to go get a checkup or what it is I call playing the game of this physical body, meaning like, oh, I'm this age. Okay, I guess I have to go do this because they say that this is when this happens. It's not fun. Nobody's going to say it's fun, but at least it will give us something to talk about with each other, right? During canasta when we're, <laughs> when we're playing with our <laughs> senior friends. Whatever. It's, it's funny because that's what it feels like. I feel super crazy. I'm like, oh, how many doctor's appointments do we have in the next month? Cool. Cool beans. Um, so back to this, this veil, um, that happens during Beltane during happen this time of year. So the veil between here and the spiritual realm is actually very thin and you can feel this because on Monday, hello, that moon guys, right? The moon was ridiculous. Now I don't purposely follow the moon cause sometimes I just like to see if I feel things or whatever. But I felt this one coming. There would be no way. <laughs> there would be no way of hiding it. Um, so you may have seen my post where I was like experiencing a ton of pressure. Basically, from my belly into my head, it felt like a Braxton Hicks contraction. If you've ever been pregnant, you felt that tightness happen into the belly. But if you haven't, it's the same feeling as like somebody squeezing around your midsection and like your blood pressure going up into your head. It's crazy. And I was driving and I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm like, ah, something weird's happening in my body. That's just from being scared. Okay, no problem. And then later I'm like, no, 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 that's the moon. <laughs> that was crazy. I jumped literally into the bath with crystals. <laughs> I was like, okay, everybody, let's go calm this down. Um, so what do you do with that type of physical energy that comes from major shifts, not just in the, the world, but in the earth? Mother Earth is, remember how I say, like one of the best transmuters of energy. She is unbelievable at it. Every time I do a session, every time we do Reiki, what do we do at the end? We bring all the energy back down towards the feet, right? Because if we don't do that, what happens? Do you know, guys? Woo. Yeah, she goes, woo, right? The person will be like, woo. <laughs> And I don't just mean like, oh, I feel a little lightheaded, which is usually how they end up. No, no, no. They won't be able to function <laughs> in this in this world. So we 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 worked on a ton of energy all over the place. We cleared up places. We helped them tonify, and then then we smooth all the energy down. Like feels like a nice slow river, and we bring it back to the feet like a calm breath, and we help them visualize it. And yeah, they're still going to be a little woozy. You want to know why? Because they're not used to feeling like that. So their head is like way lighter than normal. They're connected to spirit. 
um, the channels are all flowing and open, the chakras are all spinning the right direction and the, and the right size, and people don't generally function like that. So yeah, they feel a little woo, but with the homework, they'll be able to do stuff and move on and be awesome. There was homework. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> That's Kristen. She never does the homework. Anyway, <laughs> you do do the homework. You just tease me about it. Not definitely. I love you. Um, I don't know why I'm so itchy. So my point is we come back to Mother Earth, right? And then Mother Earth does this transmutation stuff. And what she does, the way I feel it, is like she takes all her little firefly energies. <laughs> she helps bring them down, just like the roots when we do the um, grounding exercises with the trees. And she just literally transforms them, like absorbs it. And when it goes back, and that's how I automatically close my eyes. She absorbs it, and then it comes back up into the ethers, like super slow, and it just goes back up. During this time where the veil is very thin, we can feel all of the shifts, not just between Earth, but between, I'm going to say it, galaxies. So even though you may not have the words, and believe me, I still don't, there's so many things to learn about this stuff. Um, that's what you're feeling and you don't necessarily know it. So, but this is the time. So if you want to talk to loved ones that have passed, if you want to, um, invite visions or dreams, um, just make sure that you're also grounded because otherwise you're going to have a harder time functioning in the regular world. I don't want to say the real world because that's not, this is not the real world, the regular world, the one that we're used to. If you still want to be able to, you know, write your name and take care of your kids, you have to <laughs> some ways of grounding so make sure you have your stones close by and hold one afterwards um make sure you massage your feet at the ends remember anything with the feet is going to help ground you and that includes like stomping with your feet um jackie if you want to do it with the kids like and play like pretend dinosaur afterwards that will actually help ground you but this is the time to do this like transcendental med meditation you will go not just flying but you will see so many cool things and remember when you're doing this, um, clairvoyancy goes fast. So I've never met a clairvoyant that was like, oh, it's like this super, super slow images. <laughs> like I've never heard anybody say that. I could be wrong. I've never had that. Sometimes you'll get something really um, different where it's like a movie and you get a ton of um, sequencing, sequencing, wow, sequencing happening. Um, and our friend Donna specifically, she's amazing because she can remember all of it. Me, it it really does run like a channel where I have to say it fast or I forget so much. Um, but she's very good at remembering like these details, right, Renee? It's like kind of crazy. Oh yeah, you've experienced it. She'll, movie. Yeah, she'll see a movie and she'll, and she'll remember it. Whereas I come up with tons of details, but I have to really focus on remembering them. Um, especially since they're not all in sequence order. So it's, it's just crazy. Kind of like they're flying at me. Um, so without knowing that you're psychic or whatever you are. So welcome to the club. <laughs> if you're the person going, Oh, I can't do this. Or I might have a little bit. No, you have it. Uh, you just haven't sat down and, and done some of the stuff and that's it. Nothing, no, no secrets about it. It's just some people are more in touch with it and some haven't done the work. Um, so if you're ready to do that, just remember what I said. Like I have a, I don't know if he's on tonight, but one of my friends has a giant thing of Moldavite. Moldavite. Uh, if you know anything about that stone, it's like the oldest stone comes from a meteorite. It's, it's crazy looking and it, it looks old and scary in a sense. It's very intimidating for me. Um, because I wore one carat of it, actually from Sergio's place, Renee. And uh, remember when I got that necklace? You might have been with me. Um, a little tiny carat of Moldavite. And that thing flipped my life upside down for two weeks that I wore it. I was like, what is happening? And I had to take it off. Because it was, it was, it's tons of spiritual transformation really, really fast. Um, so when you're playing with these stones and stuff, just remember, like, know exactly what your intentions are and remember that you, they need to be paired, just like how your bicep works with your tricep. So you don't really want to have just one stone that you're working with and, like, not have surrounding stones that are um, 
either help the vibratory status of it or bring you back to still being able to focus and be grounded. You need to know. So don't just like, oh, I'm just going to use this and it'll be fine. Because <laughs> they are powerful. There's a reason we use them. I had this tiny, tiny blue thing on. I don't know if I used it on you, Kristen, today. Um, I don't even know what the stone is. It's super small. And I said, as I put it on somebody said, I was like, oh, this is a really strong one. I don't remember the name. She's like, oh, really? We had the most intense experience that I was actually unsettled afterwards because I was like, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> what just happened? Um, so yeah, they work. Okay, anything else I want to say about that? Hmm. I had somebody ask today, because I when I was picking out stones for him, I said, oh, they told me to give you this. And they was like, you know, he's like, who's they? I'm like, well, today it was more the stones. And he's like, we were laughing about it. I'm like, yeah, today the stones were kind of like raising their little hands. Like, pick me, pick me. Um, but then he was asking about, um, you know, the, the qualities of stuff. He's like, sometimes people hear things and we're gone and going through that. I just wanted to share this beautiful experience because uh, he, I've only seen him twice. And afterwards today... I saw him go talk to our tree out and back without me prompting him and my heart just exploded because I was like that's what exactly what you're supposed to do and I didn't have to remind him or tell him he either remembered or he just felt well even if he remembered he felt that he was needed to do that so he was really listening to himself afterwards and I was so proud and happy for him um felt like I gave birth to this little earth baby even though <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I had a what? That's a big earth. Baby. He's a big earth baby. He's much bigger than I am. So yeah, he's bigger. <laughs> but it was really, it was really a sweet moment. So just saying, it's nice. Get to those trees. They're they're wanting and listening. Um, so my friends, before we go into meditation tonight, if you have anything you want to focus on, or have your questions about start adding them in here, especially since there's like a 40 second lag on Facebook. So just do it. Uh, yes, go ahead. Peanut yeah. gallery. What's that I'm thinking of? Uh, okay. All right, I don't see anything happening. So I'll keep it on, but you guys can start Closing the lights or dimming or whatever. I see you wrote my sister Jax. Do you have a question about her or you just want to include her into the vision? So the other thing you might be noticing with the energy right now is that you might be getting all these ideas or things that you want to do and getting excited and then um, and then getting lost in them, meaning like you're not implementing them or you're not going forth with them. Um, so I'm going to remind you that not just writing them down, um, but actually including something, somebody, because this is my issue too, is I have a ton of things I want to do and um, they need so-called manpower. Um, so that's where I make a list and then I kind of have to like prioritize like what needs to be in the cycle right now and what can we, you know, do later on. And this goes for big and small. So as you settle into your body, like I said, there's this heaviness that comes back and forth. And right now I feel like we're in a heavy place, even though, um, spring is here and moving out all the old stuff it's still moving out old stuff. So it's actually like the earth is literally like moving things for us. It's, it's tr doing that transmutation that I was discussing, but it's not always feeling so smooth. So you might be feeling more of the, you know, um, the, the galactic movements and, and things that are shifting. And as we come into higher vibrations, it's not always with ease. 
So we're gonna keep inviting. I'm ready for ease, I'm ready for ease, I'm ready for simple, I'm ready for happiness, I'm ready for love. Tell whomever you want, your guides, guardians, God, goddesses, whatnot, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for all of this, all these good things. And then take a moment to realize how much of these good things are actually already in your life and you're just continuously fine tuning them, moving them along. But you do need to have that list because otherwise the brain goes over here and over there, over there. So Sunday night, it's 9.36, we return back into our bodies. However your day has been, it's time to celebrate. Celebrate life, celebrate our lives together. We've been living this pandemic lifestyle where we're never really sure what we're supposed to be doing, what's safe, what's not, but what we do know is that if it's taught us some stuff, part of it is definitely how much we love each other. We love community. And when we feel like we don't, it's because we're fighting against it. We're, we're working against opinions and forgetting that we're all the same. <laughs> we're all one. We are all each other. Our unique differences, that's just the human stuff. You know, the stuff we're supposed to enjoy of one another. But the basics, all the same. So close your eyes and breathe. I want you to see yourself at the base of the tree. This time your back is right against the trunk or at least close to it. And you're sitting cross-legged in between two very, very large roots that are half above the earth and then deep below. And even in your vision, I want your eyes to be closed Allow your eyes to rest. And it'll move pretty quickly with this one. First, the sun will be rising. And if you've ever really sat before sunrise, there's this amazingness that happens because it's so quiet. It's so still. And even when the birds are chirping, there's like this little lilt that happens with them. It's not really crowded in sound. It's pretty singular. And there's a call and response. And there's this echoing of sounds. And it's simple. And I want you to bring your hands like right above your chest actually easier if you're sitting up maybe we'll do that one night but I want you to feel the energy between your palms and if you don't feel anything no sweat but even having the direction of like hey we're getting into this vision we're gonna do this the body responds immediately the more and more you do it it goes okay we're gonna cultivate energy we're going to come into this place of of stillness and and start to re leave and respond and and receive. So at the base of the tree, right above you is this beautiful tree that has started to fill out at this time of year. It's gone from pink blossoms to these green leaves taking over. And I don't think the blossoms are angry about that. I think they're so happy to have their moment that they fall willingly to the earth. And then the green leaves, they start to fill in and they have their own agenda. And then you'll start to feel the moment the sun starts to creep up very, very softly. And we'll pause that and you can feel the heat of the sun coming. Even if it's in, in the first few minutes, you can feel that change just feels like it happens all of a sudden. Still in this place of simple stillness. 
and then I definitely want us to be together. So whether or not you're strangers or whether or not you want to invite a loved one in that's alive or has passed, you're going to do that now and they're all going to have their own spot. So if you want to bring somebody in and you want them to share your tree, you're going to have them have their own space right next to you, but with a root in between you so that you have your own space and you're still there with each other. And then other people are going to be hundreds, if not more, by their own trees, big and small, doing the same exact thing that you're doing, sitting, sitting up cross-legged and just breathing slowly, listening to the sounds of the world awakening. I want you to savor each breath of fresh air as the air moves through your nostrils into your lungs, deep into the belly. And as you gently exhale, savor the moment of powerful release. Let your mind release any thoughts and come into this stillness and space within. Allowing the body now to come into higher vibration, feeling a sense of peace, calm, certain type of suppleness that your mind and body can be with ease. Starting to notice how every part that's around you, the root that's next to you, the flower that's tickling your feet, each part has this very, very calm vibration, but it's definitely a vibration. And it feels like heat, like love, like joy. And that's really because it is. So a flower doesn't wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, oh, I'm hideous. Um, the squirrel doesn't come out and think, oh, I'm living in scarcity. I have no food. The tree doesn't question why the blossoms have fallen and have been replaced. They just are. So nature, while this willing transmutator, is also this willing one of being present and existing. They're just happy to exist. So as we tune into this force of the life that's within the earth, you can feel into the energies that are present into the season. And now you can ask yourself and your guides what you would like your life to look like to bloom into all that can be, into all that you can be on this path. So we're not looking for direct answers. We're here just existing and opening to the possibility of allowing the path to be. And tonight, if you start to see colors or or visions or anything like that, I'm gonna ask you to just let them fly with your breath, meaning don't try to control them or stop the visions, just allow it to happen. So even if they're not what you think they should be, just remember every part is valid and vital. And if you have some loved one near you, in your mind's eye or actually even in your physical body now, you can open your palms and start to feel their energy. And you might start to feel some sensations in the body. Sometimes there's just a deep knowing or maybe you can hear them, whatever it is. Just trusting that you asked and therefore they are there.
and then you'll turn the palms away from you and see if you can sense any heat around your body. This is in your mind and also in your physical body if you feel like moving. So nature provides this song that's so simple and so magical. And what you're going to give back to nature is this. You're going to direct your breath down into the roots and start thanking them. Thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us along. Thank you for growing without question. So you can feel your fingertips just go into that earth. You can feel how there is a communication that comes up and it's so different because the earth isn't able to speak with words the way we think but if you really sat and listened you would you would hear things and now you're going to have more people come around your tree so you'll all be sitting back to the trunk in between roots And you can feel your sits bone, your root chakra, really connecting. It feels like a cord that goes up and down the spine. And I discussed this anchor that happens as soon as you connect into the earth. You anchor back in and there's a lightness that happens. And that's when you start to really release from the body. So however this vision is going for you, you're doing a beautiful job just being willing to be open here. So I also want you to notice here what else you can sense. Maybe you're running your fingertips along the grass, or maybe there's more dirt there, whatever it is, see if you can feel what's beneath you. As your feet come from underneath your body, let them stretch out the legs in front of you. Let your body do what it needs to do. So whether or not you're doing it um, in your body right now, or if it's just in your mind, allow the body to become freer with motion. See what it feels like to just let your head tilt back and forth and see what it feels like to drop your feet, you know, out or the knees out. We're just getting that sense of having the earth really beneath you. So guides and guardians, we ask tonight for the divine to provide ease of way, ease of transitioning, to provide guidance along the path that we are on, to provide simple beauty, simple sounds, Allow thoughts to become calm, peaceful, and definitely hopeful. Allow our bodies to enjoy pleasure again. Allow our bodies to be raised to the proper vibrations. Put your hands right on your lower belly, right by your navel. And see if you can sense the heat and the changes that are coming from this vision, that are coming from your breath direction, and all the energies that we're inviting in. Can you remember 
what it was like to come from the earth. Can you recall what it's like to be made up of all energies, all of the elements? If I told you that you were once all of those things and you weren't in this physical body, would it make more sense of why we can utilize them to come into peace or vision? because you are all of the above. So when you want a loved one to come to you, have you given them restrictions like we gave on ourselves earlier? It can't happen, there's no possibility. Or it has to look a certain way or it won't be right. What if we invited them in all their forms, in their colors, in their feelings of the elements? What if we said, I am willing and wanting to experience you in all senses? And what then? Would they be gone? Would we be able to find the joy that the elements provide? The way that divine speaks to us well, surely then it wouldn't be limited. So as you connect to these senses, to these things that you have always been part of, as you can imagine how they have that way of transmuting, then all energies are truly not lost. They just have changed and transformed and converted and as your vibration raises once more, you'll surely be able to gain access. And the veil here is so thin. And so, so beautiful. And then give yourself permission to smile knowing that your time has come to blow and groom into the full soul embodiment that's possible for you in this life, knowing that you are from all forms and therefore can only go back to all forms. Smile knowing that your brothers and sisters and all are here in this space of change and receiving, gliding and flying and learning and relearning and listening all together. Friends, it's time to celebrate. Allow the heaviness to release, take a break from it. The what ifs and could be's are no longer serving. And so we offer a release of anything that does not serve us. And we thank the divine for its guidance, its love and its support. And we ask to hear and to feel all those whom we love whether here or there, we ask to feel them in our daily lives. We ask that we can stay in gratitude of those sensations of acknowledgement and the pleasure of it, of the pure joy of remembering somebody in their laugh. We ask that we can stay there. You are made from the lights, the aurora borealis, the stars from trillions of years ago. You are made from meteorites and red giants. You are made from anything you can possibly think of, the stardust. God has created you in that vision and therefore 
when we connect and when we call upon our ancestors, there is no doubt that you will see, feel, experience all of this. Just stop questioning whether or not it's real because it is, it's real. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And when you press them together, they make a damn diamond. So allow your body to come back into this beautiful world, remembering that, yeah, it's hard, but it, we can also ask for ease. And here we are together, living that dedication and living that practice. Allowing all the colors to fly, allowing everything to come back into the body. Sensing how you and the tree and the roots have never separated. That your loved ones are all there with you, celebrating this change of season, celebrating the fact that dandelions come up through the cracks no matter what we do. Life finds a way. And so will you. So tonight, be easy with yourself. Let go of those things you didn't do on your list and make more of the things that you need to do or want to do. Enjoy every little thing, including weeds. Enjoy that phone call for five minutes from an old friend. Enjoy the smile that crosses your mouth when it's not maybe the right timing. Enjoy how silly you can be. Enjoy it all. And when it's not so hard, remember, wow, this moment feels good. And I'll stay there. So create that space for yourself. And remember, the only person you have to ask permission from is you. And God will say no. He says no. But he will say yes. Okay, being in loving divine connection with yourself will only help you heal and therefore heal others. So I'll hang out for a bit if you want to chat when we're here. Um, I don't know if my little Zoomers are going to be awake or not, but let's be quiet, okay, as we transform back into this world. <laughs> Hey, Jen. So I'm going to share one more thing about like, you know, without like broadcasting everything that I've been going through. Um, you can always PM me, that's fine. But um, one of the amazing things to me is how quickly, like after a relief comes, um, how quickly the mind goes into automatic. <laughs> like, and that's kind of crazy, right? So Maybe we have some big stressor or trauma, and as soon as it's done and it's kind of resolved or whatever, the brain immediately wants to fill that space, like, and it's crazy, right? So, um, I noticed yesterday that I had, like, and you know what, maybe I should do a whole night on this, but we'll see, um, an emotional hangover, and <laughs> there's no great way of describing it other than it feels like. I drank, but I didn't, and it feels like I don't want to move or do anything. Um, and it's from coming down from a big event. So it's not comfortable. This is another place I'm not comfortable with because that means that like I'm not doing the way I want to do. Um, and it makes everything else harder, including treating. So I'm being honest about that because it also caused me to find those rough edges in my boundaries that like I don't like to explore <laughs> which includes saying no to people I love which includes um withholding information until I'm ready which includes um all these little boundaries that are like no this is my space and I'm just not ready for anybody else to share it with me so um so I'm proud of myself for a few things and definitely one of them was asking Renee to do something with me because I know well hello because I knew I needed, um, I just needed her there. And um, 
maybe in the past I would probably been like, no, you can do it on your own. It's okay. Um, and then coming to this maturation of realizing like, well, yeah, we can do a lot of things on our own. <laughs> but if I'm asking for ease in my life, right, I'm asking for more ease. Well, how would that be worked out? I would ask for support. So that's my example for it. And if you watch the beginning part of tonight's meditation, you'll understand more of what I'm talking about. But if we're asking for these things, we're saying we want them. Um, how are you showing up to do that for yourself? How are you showing up to support those wants so that you're not contra you know, contradicting yourself of like, oh, this is what I want. This would make me happy. And then like, you're not really working on it. So go back to that Pete, you know, that part that you wrote about, like, what's, what are you saying that you can't do? Um, ladies on Zoom, how are you feeling? Hello. But I definitely fell asleep in between it again. You know what? They, From what now went... on, you're not allowed to lie down anymore. No. <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> I, actually, I actually stopped myself from lying down because that happens to me. No, yeah. it's funny because when I was listening to you, there was a part of it, I think it was like a third through where yeah. I was like oh I like what she's doing here I want to tell her you know that I ha how I liked it and now I totally forgot what it was and there you go and that's what I Jeannie's here. away congratulations Jeannie stayed up I'm so proud of you <laughs> came back when you were saying about the, the list not worry about the list of course that was the oh, end end the list. okay and that's when I came back okay Welcome back. <laughs> right in the very beginning, I couldn't decide on a tree. It was really funny. Oh, well, that's a hard I thing. I had a really hard time. Like, my, mm. like I was I was in front of a tree, and then I was like, no, that's not the right tree. And that's I was not the right tree. tree. That's not the right tree. And ultimately, it was really funny. Like, the tree mm. I, I settled on for the first part, like, was a tree that I grew up around. But it's not there anymore. And it's then okay. and all of a sudden, I was like, I could be under this tree and it would be cool. But I feel like I want to be under this other tree, which would be even more cool. So I left the second tree and went <laughs> for the third tree. Like, it was the stupidest thing. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's no. That's very funny. And that felt right. So then I was like, I was. And, and this is the, the right tree. tree. Of, it's the tree that's actually in front of my church where we had our engagement pictures. Well, taken. that's a really good tree. And it's a huge linden tree. It's amazing. The tree, oh, I remember that tree. <laughs> it's huge well, that linden. tree also has like a limb you can sit on. Yep. It's yeah. Like a bench. It's yeah. a really cool tree. Um, yeah, it's got roots. It, it's root bound yeah. all the way to the street. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. If but you're me deciding on the right tree. When I finally decided on the tree, my entire crown started to vibrate. Okay. Once pa I sat on the tree, the whole crown. Yeah. Started Pause for a second. So this is also really important to note that, um, just like people, you don't necessarily vibe the same way with each of anything. So, um, just the same way that you would like, uh, you could you could close your eyes and go into a furniture store and touch something. People say that, oh, that has no consciousness. How could that work? But that's, that's not, everything has a vibration. So if you can touch something and actually feel like, oh, this feels good. Same thing with stones, right? We know this, but you can do this with inanimate objects of all types. Um, you just know. The way people, um, chirals will do kinesio testing and they'll be like, this serves you better than this serves you. It's because your body knows. So yes, like there might be a tree that you love aesthetically, but then there might be another one that like, it doesn't look as pretty or whatever, and you feel it and go, this is the tree. So Kristen's crown chakra was vibrating because immediately, what did I say it does? Earth transmutes and shoots it back up. So <laughs> your crown chakra goes, yes, I want this. So after meditation, it's the same thing as like, uh, you know, go, going to Kripalu, people would say, I have a hard time sleeping or they zonked out. And my teacher would always say, well, as long as you meditated, you'll be good. You can feel, you know, You'll be more um, on that higher vibration, so sleep won't matter as much. <laughs> so think about that. If you don't have time to take a nap or you're not good at naps, go meditate. Yeah, feel the vibration. Are you marky mark? 
Yeah, Phil's doing, feel it, feel it. I hear it, I know it's happening. I can see you wearing the boxers and all that stuff. I got it. Good job, Phil. <laughs> um, yeah, his mom just passed away. Her name was Alma, which means soul, so God rest Alma. Um, very, very sad loss too. <laughs> Phil's laughing. So guys, do you have any more things to talk about or questions? I'm here for a few more minutes and then I need to go take care of myself. That needs to happen. So I'm here. Let me know what's up. Um, beautiful. Renee, good job. And do it. All right, I'm giving you 10 more seconds of love. No, nothing yet. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the homework will be this week, but there will be something. I don't know if we're going to do one on Mother's Day. I'll think about it. We'll see. I have to feel into that because I am giving myself the day off. I'm going to work on Saturday instead. So I'll let you guys know. You'll see something if I'm not going to do it, of course. And, um, but just, uh, yeah, thanks, Jeannie. Lots of hearts to you too, my friend. I think this is the time to like, you know, we haven't been scared of feeling things, right? I, I feel like my community is really diving into it. And now it's the time of reprieve. Can we do that now? Can we have some reprieve? Please, let's ask for some easiness. <laughs> so let's let this week bring us into some ease and joy. So I want to hear really more about um, what you did outside this week and how you connected to spirit as you did it. So do something that's thoughtful, it doesn't have to be a ceremony, just thoughtful by way of outside. And um, I can't wait to hear about it. And you're going to share it because I know you want to, because you're going to be so proud of yourself. And see if you can find a flower that maybe you vibe with more than others, because that is also very, very true. My children love um, tulips right now, yes, because they're also very pretty, but they just think they're so happy looking. So <laughs> see, see what you feel. All right, I love you guys so much. Um, I want to curse the namaste, but I won't, I won't curse it right now. So we're just going to say, <laughs> yeah, Renee mouthed it for me. I'm not going to do it. Namaste. <laughs> Jai Latte.